Georgia also has the largest correctional supervision population in the nation at over 400,000 people on either probation or parole. And what this means is that we are wasting an enormous amount of human potential. It affects everyone, but it does have a disproportionate effect on people and communities of color. In Georgia, black people make up 32% of the state's population, but 51% of the people in jails and 60% of the people in prisons. Discriminatory criminal justice policies have unjustifiably disadvantaged black people. So we have that universal problem that we want to address. Additionally, the United States currently has 10.6 million job openings. And I hear repeatedly from employers, from people all over the community, they need good people to be in these jobs. Formerly incarcerated people are unemployed at a rate of over 27%, which is several times higher than the total US unemployment rate, by quite a magnitude of order, of course. Um, unemployment is highest within the first two years of release, suggesting that pre and post release employment services are critical in order to reduce recidivism and help incarcerated people quickly integrate back into society. We know that obtaining stable, high quality employment is critical for successful re-entry following incarceration. And now more than ever, we need to find ways to fill those jobs. This is why I was proud to introduce the Bipartisan Workforce Opportunity for Returning Citizens Act. This legislation creates a competitive grant program through the Department of Labor to award workforce grants to eligible entities that assist incarcerated or previously incarcerated individuals with obtaining employment or credentials in skilled trades such as plumbing, construction, masonry, electrical, and more. And we all know that those are good paying jobs, uh, which is also very important. Uh, eligible entities under this bill are local workforce boards, career and technical education schools, uh, and intermediaries such as nonprofits, institutions of higher education, and a combination joint venture or both. Uh, some current endorsers of the bill include Gwinnett Technical College, thank you, uh, the Vera Institute of Justice, Reform Georgia, and Inspire Outreach. So thank you all uh, for weighing in on that. Um, we are currently working with the committee uh, on education and labor uh, to integrate this piece of legislation into the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. And one of the things you'll hear is already informally the U.S. Department of Labor uh, puts money behind these kinds of programs. And what this bill does is make that formal, make sure it gives it a statutory framework and make sure that that kind of program will endure for the future and will be one that we can continue to build on. So that is what we are pushing forward. Uh, we do have bipartisan support. Uh, Representative Jay Obel Ober Obernolte, a Republican from California's 8th District. And of course, my friend, Representative Hank Johnson, our original co-sponsors. And we are very optimistic that this will be integrated into that reauthorization legislation and will pass Congress uh, later this year. So with that, um, I'm gonna turn it over to some of our partners here. Let me just see, um, I think first up, we have uh, Representative uh, Greg Kennard uh, to talk about this and uh, just give us some remarks about your organization as well. I am Representative Greg Kennard. My district is 102, which is Gwinnett County, portions of Lawrenceville and Swanee. And uh, my journey into politics came from this particular place of working in this social sector for most of my adult career. So Inspire Outreach is a church organization that has transitional programs to end homelessness and domestic violence. We've, been, we've had the programs for uh, our 15th year, so we've served thousands of individuals, getting them on their feet and into sustainable, independent lives. Our success rate is about 67%, so that's very good, if you understand um, this uh, population. Um, so a typical client for us is someone who has a mental health diagnosis, someone who has a subsequent addiction, uh, followed by low academic achievement, and then, of course, a brush up with the law, most of them have a felony background, and it's amazing how all four of those things intersect. You're probably aware that the largest mental health service provider in our state is Georgia State Prisons. We have criminalized mental health. So that's a problem in and of itself, but <clears throat> when we get into the felony background in Georgia, if you have a criminal record, if you ever pleaded guilty or in a contest, you have a criminal record that 
follow you around for the rest of your life. So that in and of itself is a barrier. I've dropped legislation at the state level that corrects that so that if someone serves their time, pays their restitution, when they finish their sentence, the criminal record on a, a nonviolent offense would end right there. They don't carry it for the rest of their life, which would subsequently serve as a barrier to employment and uh, housing. I've also, you know, Congresswoman, Congresswoman Bordeaux mentioned probation. Georgia is four times the national average. Uh, more people on probation than any other state in the union. And uh, so I dropped another bill to limit our probation uh, terms to 24 months. Even community service uh, supervision director Michael Nell will tell you that probation is not effective after 24 months. It only serves as a, a trap to violate. So this legislation would narrow that window of time to just 24 months where someone can move on. So, what we have found at Inspire is what's incredibly effective is using assets like our local technical college that serves as a great solution for so many things. Uh, many of our clients uh, did not complete high school, so we have utilized the GED prep program here. We move someone across the finish line to that, and then we move on to higher levels of education through the certifications, through the degree programs that are offered here. So we have utilized that for 15 years. So we have people right now who are in gainful employment who got their horticultural certification here, started a landscaping company, HVAC, welding. I have a number of clients who went through cybersecurity and the network specialist program. So education, as you know, serves as just a great opportunity to elevate someone's life. But again, there's just other barriers that we have to locate and address like criminal records, that persist to be housing and employment uh, barriers. Uh, I speak often with the Department of Labor and uh, they're trying to find ways to, to employ uh, these kind of individuals with this kind of background as well. So we're looking at more uh, fast track certification programs through the technical college systems, certifications that can take maybe six, eight weeks and then get someone right in the workplace. So I'm very much in support of this effort. Uh, it's greatly needed. I think people who have been incarcerated are some of the most overlooked people in our society, the most underrepresented, and I'm so glad uh, for this group here who is giving voice to this situation. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna skip around just a little bit. I can, I can feel you're like <laughs> restless over here. I'm just gonna move over to Dr. Melvin Everson, uh, who is the president of Gwinnett Tech, and some really important programs here. Well, so. I've been promoted to research over the last few years. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for this opportunity and thank you for coming to Gwinnett Tech. Uh, before I get into my remarks, I am uh, a uh, criminology major background and aspiration being an attorney, and, but I didn't follow through with that and I should have, but needless to say, this um, topic today is very important for me. I'm originally from South Georgia, and never in my life did I think I would grow up and become a part of the General Assembly in the state of Georgia, and I happened to be a legislature down there. And after my term ended there, I wrote off, and I got appointed by Governor Hill to be the Executive Director of Workforce Development for the state of Georgia. In that position, I traveled the state of Georgia, and I ran into individuals we're speaking about today, I like to refer to them as returning citizens. And from across this state, Project Impact down in Murray, Georgia, all the way over to the returning, in, returning entry program over in Carrollton, Georgia, these individuals were faced with obstacles that were beyond their control as far as getting beyond to move on. And I'm proud to say here at Gwinnett Tech, we've had a welding program with the Department of Gwinnett Correction, Santee's Wilson here, for the past, since 2018, we've had four cohorts and we've graduated 37 returning citizens with a welding certificate. And those individuals have been gainfully employed. And uh, my background in criminology will tell me that once a person coming out of an incarceration, studies have shown us the sooner they are employed, the less likely they are to recidivate and go back into the system. I want them gainfully employed so they can become productive 
citizen, taxpayer and citizen, not looking on my dime. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're very, very supportive of this and we do all we can here at Gourmet Tech. I go so far to say that even beyond the welding program, we are venturing out into a new opportunity with the Department of Correction. We are hoping to start, as soon as we finalize everything, a diesel mechanic program, program for those individuals as well. So when they return to society, they will have gainful, sustainable employment skills that they can take into the world and be gainfully employed. And our program here is sponsored through the WEO Act, Workforce Initiative, um, uh, um, Occupational Training Act, passed back in uh, 2014. And that's how we were able to fund this through uh, ARC, uh, assisting us with those funding mechanisms. And we are proud to say that it has been very successful. Matter of fact, a lot of these individuals, we go through the graduation exercise as if they're graduating from college. Mm -hmm. We have the cap and gown because and we invite their families. We supply the refreshments for them because a lot of them, this is the first time they ever graduated. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Cannon, who's the president of Gwinnett Tech, he even gave the commencement address. Mm -hmm. And to see the tears in the eyes of these individuals is just amazing. Mm -hmm. With their children sitting there saying, I have a new lease on life with my dad or my, my dad. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just amazing. So um, we are just happy that we're able to do that. And we are here to assist you in whatever way we can to continue to make sure that these citizens return into society or gainfully employed and become productive citizens. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna skip over to the other side. Uh, we've got Maxwell Ruffinsburg, uh, Executive Director of Reform Georgia. And I'll ask Greg, could you pass that over to him so we can make sure that we can do that. I don't think this is actually it's working. Okay. I think it did. It is working. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for inviting us all. Um, again, my name is Maxwell Rupertsburg. I serve as the Executive Director for Reform Georgia. Uh, we are a small policy think tank uh, conducting data-driven policy research on uh, criminal justice reform at this, typically at the state and local level um, in Georgia. Uh, we were pleased to offer our comments on this bill um, and uh, I wanna thank Representative uh, Bordeaux and her team for working on this issue, for the attention given to it. Uh, I also have the privilege during the day to work in behavioral health mm -hmm. um, with programs that directly uh, support individuals um, exiting situations of institution, whether hospitalization or correctional facilities. Uh, and so keenly aware of the impact that opportunities like this can have on transforming someone's life, uh, especially supporting their path to recovery and success outside of an institutional setting. Uh, there was a timely study that was released recently um, by the Rand Corporation that addressed nationally 64% of men over the age of 30 who are unemployed uh, have been arrested, 64%. And 46% um, of that population have been convicted. Uh, that is a reflection of a system that over criminalizes individuals uh, and the challenges with employment are a symptom of that system, right? But it also uh, points to the fact that more opportunities need to be created uh, for this population uh, to provide employment opportunities and allow them a path to recovery and independence. When we look at Georgia's system as a whole, over 200,000 Georgians walk through county jail doors every year. Uh, that's nearly a quarter of a million each year that get a new uh, arrest record and potential criminal history record. Uh, as uh, Representative Kennard uh, indicated, until recently, it was almost impossible to have your uh, criminal history restricted in the state of Georgia. Um, so that follows people around and it creates these really damaging barriers to employment and housing as 
lowest public benefits uh, that people may need. Um, so creating opportunities for further education um, in, in any capacity is a really meaningful uh, step in the right direction. Um, so we are really optimistic about this legislation and very supportive of this effort. Um, at the same time, one bill can't fix all problems and we recognize that. Uh, we would encourage legislators and policymakers to be thinking about opportunities to um, ban the box, right? To encourage employers to stop asking about criminal history records that, that may be from long ago and may have no bearing on their ability to be gainfully employed and a contributing member. Uh, those represent real barriers to um, employment and housing as well. So again, very uh, appreciative of this work, very excited to see it. And um, thank you again for inviting us to 